Welcome back to the channel. Today, I want to talk about generally managing gravity forms. Things we've already covered in the last few videos are things like notifications and confirmations, what that means, uh, what do feeds mean for gravity forms. These are areas that are very uh, detailed in how a particular form might work for you and your site. Now, I want to sort of break it out and zoom out and look at gravity forms as a whole and touch upon some of the things you might be facing day to day when using gravity forms uh, for your business or your freelance clients. So the first thing that I want to introduce you to are form templates. Uh, you don't have to start from scratch, though I often do myself <laughs> because I like to control every little detail of every field that I put in. Uh, but you don't need to start from scratch if you're using Gravity Forms. You can explore some of the form templates that we have built in by default. It might kickstart an idea for you. It might just help you get to the finish line a lot faster where 80% of the work is already done. And then all you have to do is modify the 20% to get it the way that you need it. Sort of like picking a theme for your entire WordPress site, if you will. But if you were setting up something like a user registration form, for instance, you can hover over the user registration form template, add it in. So we'll call it user registration. Use template. And this will basically fill out uh, the typical field you'll need for that particular uh, form. So user registration, we have our first name, last name, email, confirm the email, and enter in a password. This is actually creating a user on the WordPress site for this particular example. So these templates can help you get there faster, and you can simply modify them as you see fit to make it work the way that you need it to work for your WordPress site. So generally you're faced with, well, what happens next? You've built your form, now what do we do with our form? How do we get it to the page or the post that we need it to appear on? There's a few different ways to add forms to pages or posts in WordPress. Let me show you a few of them. So right in the form editor screen, we can click on the uh, embed button up top. And it's going to give you some information. If you're uh, a seasoned WordPress developer or designer and you've been working with Gravity Forms for a while, capturing the form ID right here is important. Sometimes you're building stuff in code and you're calling uh, the form ID in your PHP or JavaScript and you want to know that right off the bat. So there it is. Form ID is uh, visible right here. But for the average user folks like you and me, you want to take this form and now put it on a page. So you can add it right here to an existing piece of content, a page or a post, and you can get a drop down or start searching for a particular page or post in your WordPress website. And then adding it to uh, the page is as easy as clicking on the insert form button. Or if you're starting from scratch, um, oftentimes I'm making a new form, I'm envisioning it's going onto a new page. Creating a new page or post can happen right here in the form editor. So we have a user registration, we'll call this user registration. And when I click on this create button, it's going to create a new page titled user registration. So you don't have to leave the form editor. Uh, if you're still doing some work here and you wanna stay here, you can. Uh, but you don't have to browse out to the pages uh, screen and start creating new pages and posts. Nope, you can do it right here in Gravity Forms. It's a nice quality of life feature uh, at Gravity Forms. And then lastly, and I'm going to click this button in a second, and then we'll go take a look at that page. But lastly, if you're not using the block editor or you're working on another area of your WordPress site, you can quickly copy the short code. Short codes haven't been around for a while. There's a lot of folks who use the classic editor still. But if you're not in that space and you're not, you know, you're wondering what the short code is even about, the short code's probably not for you. But if you're still using some form of classic editor or another editor that doesn't um, take Gutenberg blocks, you can copy the short code and paste that in the location where you need it to show up. But let's go ahead and click on the user registration, uh, create new page. So we'll click that. That'll load and create the new page for us uh, inside of our WordPress site. And there it is. The Gravity Forms form is already here on the page. This is what it looks like. User registration up at the top. So when we publish this, and view the page, it's going to look exactly like we just saw. It's right here uh, on this particular page. Let's go back and edit the page. Um, and when you're here in editing the form in the block builder or in the editor, when you select the gravity form, you have on the right-hand side all of the uh, design features uh, and look and feel features that we have for each form when you're putting it onto a page or a post. So 
you can hide the form title, hide the description. You can select which form if you wanted to change forms right here. And then we have all of the orbital styles that you can modify uh, in the right-hand side. I'm not gonna go deep into that as a, for a different video, but just showing you the management of adding forms to the page is quite easy. If you wanted to add another form to a page, you would do slash command, look for the gravity forms block, and then select your form, and that'll bring in uh, the ability to modify another form. So adding forms to a page or a post, especially if you're using Gutenberg, are very, very easy. Okay, next up I wanna talk about add-ons. You might be working on projects, new projects every day, or you're adding stuff to your WordPress website. You might be coming into the add-on screen quite often. Um, if, depending on your license level, you'll be able to install and activate a certain set of add-ons. I'm not gonna focus on one add-on, but I'm gonna talk about this in broader brushstrokes to help you just understand uh, how this all works. You can install and activate particular add-ons here. You'll see with this HubSpot add-on, it's already installed and activated. I could click deactivate. That will deactivate the add-on from this site. So you can browse your official add-ons or grab certified add-ons uh, right here in the dashboard. You can also go to gravityforms.com, search through some of the community add-ons or search for add-ons in places like the wordpress.org directory. Uh, the important thing to know, there's installing and activating add-ons like we see on this screen. And then under the settings of uh, Gravity Forms, 98% of the time your add-on is going to have a setting screen here. So for instance, you saw that that HubSpot uh, add-on was installed and activated. HubSpot has a uh, general settings page like we see here. So you can disconnect your HubSpot account, clear customs fields cache. It really depends on what the add-on does and what settings are going to appear here. However, the important part that I want to specifically point out is if we go to our forms list, under each form, again, depending on the add-on, you might also find settings that are particular to the form, especially for an add-on like HubSpot, where there's a lot of data going from, say, your Gravity Form to your HubSpot account. So there's installing and activating add-ons from the add-on page. There's settings for globally affecting your add-on across all of Gravity Forms, like we saw with the HubSpot uh, connection up to Gravity Forms. And then in this case, HubSpot has settings for each individual uh, gravity form that you're using it on, which again, if we click on edit, you're modifying all of the HubSpot settings for your particular form that you're working with. So there's like three layers to add-ons and I wanted to highlight them so you could understand what you might be working with with add-ons on a day-to-day -day basis with gravity forms. Now let's talk about entries. This will be another place that I'm sure you'll be in every day, especially if gravity forms is crucial to your business or your customer's business. Each form will have an entries screen, and you can pull these uh, entry screens up by selecting them from the drop down. That one doesn't have any data, so we'll just keep it to the simple contact form where I was testing things out. You can see my list of entries. It's uh, important to know that if you click on the gear icon, you'll see on the left hand side the active columns. These are the columns that we're seeing in that screen. That was the data that we were looking at. But we can pull in um, other fields and bring them and organize them however we see fit. So I can bring that entry date to the last column or I can put it in the first column and we'll hit save. So all of these inactive columns are data that is still stored in your entries, in your database, uh, if you will, uh, but it's not being shown on the entries page. So we're gonna hit save there. And now you'll see the entry date is saved right here and visible to us in the uh, entries. So if you want to customize what your entries look like, especially if you're working with you know other folks on the team, they want to see that data right here uh, in WordPress, you'll be able to show that stuff off. Uh, and you'd manage it just like a page or post. You can highlight it all, trash it, mark it as read or read uh, so that it disappears from this screen. Or if you click into it, you can view further details um, about that entry form that came in. Uh, especially uh, some of the add-ons that you might have running, you will see uh, some of those actions that take place so that you know that things were triggered, like if it was sending off to HubSpot, sending off to Dropbox, et cetera. But let's go back to that entries. You might be thinking to yourself, okay, how do I get these entries out of here? I, I want to export these entries. Well, number one, you can always look for an add-on that might send it off to somewhere you want it to go, like let's say Google Sheets or uh, Dropbox or something like that. 
Uh, but if we go to our import export screen, this is where you can export entries from a particular form. Uh, let's go simple contact. And then you can select which fields you want to export at a condition. If it's a very intricate form with a lot of data and you only want specific things to be exported and then also select a date range, which will, um, you know, give you a date range. Like you only want to export entries from June to October or whatever. You can set that up and that'll download the entries in a CSV format. And I wanted to highlight that because oftentimes we get asked, well, I'm on the entry screen. I'm looking at the entries in my format. How do I get these things out of here? That lives in the import export screen. Uh, and there's other stuff here. You can, you can export entire forms. Like if you want to bring them into another WordPress site, uh, you can do that. You can import forms, those exports that you made and bring them into, into your site. So if you're again, a freelancer or an agency or working in an organization that uses a lot of gravity forms across the organization, you can import, export those forms really easily. And then export entries will get you that data that's retained inside of your gravity forms database, if you will. So a lot of stuff here today. I wanted to cover the things that you are going to be touching on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, aside from building the forms that'll be for another video. Uh, but some of the higher uh, concepts in Gravity Forms is what we're trying to look at with this particular series. So templates, adding forms to a page, managing add-ons and understanding how add-ons works. And then lastly, of course, the entries and you know working with those from the entries view page to importing and exporting those from WordPress. Thanks for watching today's video. Thumbs up if you like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you want more. If you have questions, leave us some questions below. We'd love to answer them for you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.